Hey everyone, Ryan Young, Kama Jiu Jitsu. Hope you're doing well. So, that video that I did on Jerk Jitsu, it actually picked up pretty good from the start. So what I thought I would do is I'd give you some examples of what Jerk Jitsu is. You know my thinking of it if you already saw the other video. Don't worry about it. Learn how to deal with it. Don't be the victim. Don't say, hey, that wasn't fair. Life is not fair, guys, right? And Jiu Jitsu is not fair either. If you do this for the reason why we do it here, it's because you're doing it for self-defense. You can do it for sport as well, but learn how to defend yourself. Don't think to yourself, oh, you can't do that, that's illegal. Something is illegal, that means you really want to do it in a fight, right? As far as a competition, just don't do that in a competition, but don't think in terms of that's illegal. What we want to do is we want to be ready for anything, but not be so upset if something happens. And in fact, it helps to have a mindset of, if, if something happens that's unexpected, think of it as your fault. So I'll give an example. Oh, by the way, this is Brandon. Brandon's one of our assistants here. And um, if I'm teaching a private, and this person I'm teaching knows very little about jujitsu, they don't know what's an appropriate way to react to anything. They may throw an elbow one way, or throw the elbow that way, and if I get hit, it's my fault. Now, if they're a good person, when they hit me, they're gonna go, oh, 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 I'm really sorry, you know, I didn't mean to do that. Well, yeah, of course, I know you didn't mean to do it, but I look at it, it was my fault for getting hit because I should have known better, right? I should have placed my head in the right spot or I should have not been where their hit ended up. That comes with experience. You just have to be hit enough times in those ways to know how to deal with it. So I'll give you some examples, some things that some people call jerk jitsu, but really it just comes down to you have to ask your partner or ask yourself about your partner, did he intend to do what just happened? If you can truthfully answer no, he did not intend to do that. And you need to, you need to give them the benefit of the doubt because they're your training partners. But if you, know, if you, if you had an altercation in the past and this person really does not like you, then it's probably not an accident. And that way then it just should be okay, it's on. Either that or if it's not on, then just don't train with that partner anymore. Here's the thing, once you ask, you ask yourself, was that intentional? Did that elbow come flying into my face intentionally? If the answer is no, then the only one that you can get mad at, mad at is yourself because you put your face in that spot to get elbowed. So here's an example. Let's say I take Brandon down like this, right? We come down and I'm on the ground here. Right where I'm at right now, he can just, if he's in a fight, we're fighting, he'll just, he'll just elbow me this way. This whole area right here, that elbow can hit me. And that's my fault. So if, if, he, if, if we're here and he just tries to turn to get to his back and that elbow hits me along the way, that's my fault. So somebody may ask, okay, Ryan, what do we do so that it doesn't happen? Easy. Here. Now he's not hitting me anymore. Oh, but let's say I want to get up. Then I do this first and then I get up knee and belly now. Now he can't hit me, right? I may also want to keep my hands here because he may do one of these guys, oop, that way. That's not good too, right? I had myself in that position, and even though I have a better position, I can't, I can't think to myself, oh, well, you're not supposed to do that. No, I don't know what he's gonna do. And he's my training partner, but if he weren't my training partner and this were an altercation, he's gonna do whatever he's gonna do. Some guys, they're experienced street fighters, and they're gonna be looking for stuff to do from any position. So you have to be ready for it, right? So controlling the trunk is one thing, but the extremities are what's gonna hit you. So I'm knee in the belly, boom, and I'm right here, I'm controlling here. Now I've got this kind of stuff here, but I always gotta watch here or put my hip here, now the elbow can't get me, and my base is good, right? Base is very important, right? So this is, in this way, I'm safe. He can try to hit me if he wants, but there's nothing here, why? Because I'm not over here. If I'm over here, bang, right? So that's one thing. Okay, so here's another one. So let's say we, we end up in some sort of situation. He punches me and I need to have my head glued to him over here. Because if I'm here, then that elbow can hit me the same thing. So I'm always over here. I'm connecting here, I'm connecting here, I'm connecting here, right, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm safe. Now, what about, let's say, if he's gonna kick me with a knee or something, right? I need to have my hip over here. If my hip's stuck to him, he can't, hit, he can't hit me, right? I'm protecting myself the whole time. And if I do this in practice all the time, then it's something that will help me at the same time if I get hit in class. So let's say I go to, I go to clinch him, regular front clinch, turn this way, and I'm here, right? Look at that hand right there. 
right? So what we'll do often in class is he'll slap my forehead, right? It's like, ah, right? I got to make sure I cover it, right? So this way, I know that I've always got control of it. I know he's not going to hit me, but at the same time, I need to think he, uh, that he is going to hit me. And sometimes in class, we'll keep each other honest, where if I get to here, like this, bang, oh, all right. You see how that works? So he's, he's helping me in that way. Another thing is, let's say I'm clinching again, right? Say I'm here. If I don't have my head buried here, then I'm out here, guess what? Headbutt. Exactly right. If I can see his face, he can headbutt my face. Right? So I have to make sure I hide it. You need to make it a practice in all of your training to hide your head, protect your head. Right? Now, what about as far as slamming? Right? That's one that I talk about a lot in videos. So let's say he's playing guard. He's got a good closed guard on me. Right? I stand up. I pick him up. Okay? People in contests do this a lot. Let's say he's got a choke on me. He's got that choke set up. <laughs> To defend myself, I'm going to pop up, I'm going to stand up, and he doesn't want to let that choke go, so he's going to hold that choke and he's going to squeeze in. Yes, right? On the other hand, I can now slam him, right? It's not good for him to be put in that position, but in a tournament, he can. Well, my contention is, for tournaments, you don't even do this. In class, you don't even do this. If I stand, let's see, he's got the choke on me. I stand up, I try to pick him up, he releases it. He's protecting himself. Make sure it doesn't happen in that way. That way, if he slams you inadvertently, let's say I have him, I have a terrible base, and as you're choking me, I just fall down, and you end up falling on your head. In fact, I'll give you an example of how it can happen. So you're going to choke me? So I pull him up, right? So the, the best case scenario would be for me to slam him on his back. But let's say I keep my base up, and as I slam, my base is still up, and he ends up falling on his neck. So bend your neck. Right here, he's stacked. You see the bend in his neck here? That is very bad. So he can get slammed on the back of his neck. That's a hospital trip for sure. All right. Now let's say I stand up and he lets me stack him like this, because I'm based. He's like that. He needs to move his head, right? So let's turn this way so the camera can see it. He needs to move his head so that if I end up going this way, he ends up just doing a backward somersault. See how that works? He moved his head. He deliberately expected that he might get stacked and rolled over, so he moved his head out of the way. That is something that you need to condition yourself to do all the time with a, a caring and considerate training partner who understands the whole self-defense concept of jiu-jitsu. Self-defense means self-preservation. You don't put yourself in a position to be in a particularly risky spot to where you can really get hurt, especially when it comes to impacts to your head or um, twists and, and cranks to your neck, which you really need to protect. Right? Now, one other thing, too. Here's a, here's a couple of dick moves, as we call it. So one from guard is that when I, get, when I start pulling at the guard, he'll go and put his forearm in my neck. And sometimes my elbow, you go stack up on me. He has to put all his weight on me, right? So some people go, oh man, what a jerk for doing this. Well, all I need to do is switch to this side. All I need to do is use my legs to relieve some of the pressure so I can now move his elbow across and I can pull him back here. And I can now take his back, right? Simple, right? But if I were to go, Oh, that's not fair, uh, you asshole. That sucks, right? That's okay, I deal with it, I get to here, and now it's out. That's one way to do it. I could probably even set up an arm bar from it, I don't know, but that's usually what I would set up from there. Another one is, guys, don't, what will have, I'll, have, I'll be playing closed guard on somebody. Most people who don't know how to open a closed guard, they're just gonna put their elbows in here, right? You know? It's, you know, I've had it happen to me so many times now, I don't care. You can do this to me all you want. I'm not gonna let go for this. You know, my legs don't even bruise anymore because of this. So when they do this kind of stuff, I just make them pay. I just pull in, pull in, and now from here, now it's gonna be game on, right? If you're gonna play like that, I'm not gonna go, you know, he's like, you know, he goes and pops up and goes, ah, man, you dick, that hurt. Well, of course it hurt, right? This is a contact sport. So, 
I'm here. He wants to do that. That's fine. I deal with the pain. And now I just come through here, and I start working my game anyway. I don't care, right? Because that's my choice, though. But the other one is, let's say I don't like it. He goes and does it. I open my guard, and I just play an open guard from here. And I let him have it. It doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter. I can play whatever I want from here, right? If, if, he, if that's the way he opens his guard and I cannot stand the pain, then so be it. Open your guard and just play anyway, right? So in summary, you know, and I, and, and I hope this kind of works out for you guys in, in your thinking about how to approach your learning through jiu-jitsu. Don't think of things as, a, as being a victim. Think of it as a way to empower yourself to to learn the art better. If somebody does something, you does something to you unexpectedly, first thing you do is if it hurts and you don't know what to do, just tap. If it's uncomfortable and you can kind of think through it, try to figure a way out of it. And if you can't figure a way out of it and it starts to hurt, then tap. It's all about getting your, mind, your mindset changed to be thinking to yourself more of a, how can I fix things rather than complaining about it? If you don't have the tools, try and find the tools. And if you can't do it, ask your, ask your partner or ask your instructor, ask somebody who, who might know the solution to what, what your dilemma is. And that'll help you go a long way toward figuring out other solutions that you're gonna be um, coming up against when you're training. So I hope that was helpful for you. I wanna thank you guys for watching. I wanna thank you for subscribing and hitting the thumbs up. More importantly, Share the videos that you like of ours. Um, share it on your Facebook, share it on your Instagram, um, share it wherever you can. Let your, let your other friends and, and other people that you train with see what we're, we're, we're teaching here because if it's valuable to you, then it'll be valuable to somebody else as well. If you want to help the channel out, feel free to scroll down our links below in the notes section and we've got Kataro belts, we've got uh, cheap geese on Amazon which are actually put together by Scotty Nelson who, was, uh, who founded OTM. Uh, we've also got books on there, we've got a link to buy Hicks and Gracie self-defense unit and most importantly, uh, jump on our Patreon channel if you want to see the techniques that we do here at Kama Jiu Jitsu that uh, Dave Kama teaches. Most of the videos are of Dave Kama teaching something, uh, a various concept and I think we have about 150 videos on there now and in fact, somebody had just emailed me about what to do, uh, about a, a, I guess a sister of his that was in a tournament and she could not do the UPA escape. So he was asking some ideas on what we could do and it turns out we've got four videos on Patreon on how to do the UPA escape and how to deal with some counters to the UPA escape. And so it's all on there, right? And, and you know, that's just four of the 150 or so videos that are on there. So if, if you're having any problems with any position, don't be afraid to jump on and try and find what you've got, what, what we've got in there. You'll definitely find it. There's a lot in there. And if there isn't anything in there that you're looking for, then you can message us and we'll try to make the video for you. But if it's, you know, this competition stuff and De La Hiva and all that, not interested. Sorry. Um, but all the basic stuff and how to, how to base and put your hips in, all, all the stuff that Hickson does and Dave Kama does, that's really, for us, that's the meat and potatoes, or what I've heard, the rice and beans of jiu-jitsu, since they're Brazilian. And if there's anything else, just go ahead and uh, shoot in the comments below. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below as well. Sometimes your question may end up on a future video. That's all I got for you. Take care and happy training now. Bye-bye now. <laughs> jerk jiu-jitsu, <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.